Good morning friends. Welcome back to my channel Drew Droids. So it's been quite a time since I posted my last video. And if uh, I guess people who are already following my channel or have watched my videos on the series that is how to build a F250 class affordable drone. It is a low cost drone. Uh, so you must be aware that I have been working on this drone. This is a drone. It is a basically a F250 size drone. The frame is F250 size. And then uh, the objective of this entire video series was to uh, build a drone which was affordable or also uh, at the same time it should be kind of a standard platform in which we can make improvements or if we need to replace parts that should be affordable like the motors so my objective originally was uh, I'm was to actually use this use this let me show you this A2212 class motors these are the cheapest motors available online okay they cost about 350 to 400 Indian rupees and then along with that use this Simon K 30 ampere standard ESCs these are also the cheapest available online and they are quite reliable actually both of the both these motors and the ESCs they are very reliable I have been working with them since last 3-4 years so the bulk of the cost actually comes from this ESC and the motor so we are sticking to this motors these motors are not not actually meant for, to be used with these size drones they are meant for the uh, it is the F500 uh, the bigger drones F, you can check out my videos on the there's a series of my video you can check the link on the description uh, with which I initially worked with these motors to build a 500 class drone these are meant for that using the uh, 1045 that is a 10 inch propellers so we are using the same here it brings down the cost uh, rest I will not go into detail of the anatomy of this drone uh, okay so in today's video I want to discuss uh, some improvements uh, like some upgrades I would call to this drone now uh, if you are aware I have been using this uh, hand built uh, kind of a flight controller PCB so I'm using this Arduino Nano as the primary uh, chip uh, microcontroller. So okay, uh, this is how it sits, and usually my MPU six zero five zero, the initial measurement unit sits here. Uh, it is actually here. This is the this is the flight controller sitting uh, on this soft uh, slow response foam, which I have tuned to avoid vibrations or to isolate vibrations and they work pretty well so this is the primary flight controller okay ah. so uh, since the entire work is around Arduino platform I thought of uh, upgrading to a different microcontroller like the STM32 for which uh, job working is already worked on but then again I thought that changing to a different platform will uh, cost me time and also a lot of debugging issues so I thought of sticking to Arduino now uh, the moment you you work on an Arduino uh, you will face certain limitations and I think so these limitations will also be common to other microcontrollers even with the higher CPU speeds the thing is I want to uh, right now right now my chip is running at uh, 5 milliseconds uh, loop time means every 5 milliseconds the uh, the, the, the flight controller will run its code or execute its code okay to which 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 translates to 200 hertz refresh rate so my drone is flying toward uh, it's uh, measuring the angle roll pitch of the drone at 200 hertz okay 200 times per second so that is kind of a limit with the standard uh, process flow which I'm using to execute my code so in today's video, we will only discuss about the hardware, which I am like. I will make this uh, new series it is uh, making upgrades to your F two fifty class drone based on this Arduino flight controller. So this is the first first part or the first video in the series. Uh, 
so once you have a stable drone okay uh, once you have a stable flying drone which runs on the angle hold angle hold mode that is uh, your uh, your joystick sticks roll pitch will correspond to the angle to directly control the angle of the drone once you release this stick the drone will be zero angle means the drone will be perfectly horizontal so this is called the angle mode there is a read mode uh, meant for other activities like the fpv drones they operate on the read mode they get much faster response but ours is not a fpv drone okay this is kind of a hobby platform or a development platform in which you can add sensors maybe make improvements autonomous flight and things like that so i'm running an angle mode and i use 4 milliseconds to operate the entire code or oh, sorry 5 milliseconds now the moment i want to make upgrades to my code say i want to add a compass okay i was working on this can you see this uh, this is a magnetic compass okay it is a i2c module it communicates with the main chip or uh, the microcontroller using i2c protocol okay this is a 5 triple it l uh 5 triple it l uh chip from bosch so i'm using this it's pretty common one there are a lot of tutorials on this but thing is the moment i add this chip to my the like the uh, loop time increases it exceeds 5 milliseconds so my refresh rate goes down so if the refresh rate go down goes down the drone's stability will be affected so anything i do anything i add to my code maybe this uh compass and after we use a compass we need to use a gps so a gps and a compass will actually kind of make the drone complete for autonomous flights outdoors so in one of my previous videos you can check the description uh, link in the description i use a secondary arduino which connects to the uh, primary flight controller via i2c and the secondary arduino this was the chip actually this was a, this was the exact board i have used in my previous drone that is the 500 class drone i use a secondary chip to connect to the gps module there is new 6m module which connects via the uart port and then i was doing all the calculations here i was doing all the acquisition of gps coordinates with this chip uh, microcontroller the arduino and then sending the coordinates to the master controller through i2c and it worked up to some extent you can see in the video check out the video uh put a video down here so the drone was working uh like the, the gps positioning was working although it was not very accurate the drone was hovering with the radius of 10 meters around 10 meters 10 meters so that was a different thing but the same concept i'm trying to utilize right now i will be using uh i will be the primary objective here is to take up some of the load from the main controller and share it to a different uh, separate controller so in this case since my drone takes 5 milliseconds to complete and of those 5 milliseconds uh 2 milliseconds are completely dedicated to the 2 milliseconds are completely dedicated to generating the pwm pulses for the esc so the escs they need the servo basically they are, they have the servo input they accept standard servo input and standard servo inputs uh, operate with pulses that is 1 uh, milli 1 microsecond uh, sorry 1 uh, millisecond to 2 millisecond so 1 millisecond stands for the minimum pulse for the esc and 2 millisecond stands for the maximum pulse corresponding to the maximum rpm of the motor so this is how our servo works and the same input is used here also so now the what happens is the code is uh, the algorithm of this uh, this particular flight controller is such that 2 milliseconds are always utilized by uh, utilized for generating the pwm pulses so out of the 5 milliseconds the 2 milliseconds are completely taken away by my, by my uh, pwm generation code so that is where i thought that i could take away the pwm generation code or the function from this primary controller flight controller and put it into a second controller this is second arduino 
So how will this will work? This diagram here, if you can see the diagram. The primary flight controller and the second flight controller will be connected via I2C. Okay, so I2C protocol. I'm using these connectors here. I have a port here, which this is the I2C port. Connect this to my second controller. And the whatever necessary pulses are required to operate the motor, those pulses will be uh, communicated to the second controller, to the I2C. Okay, I will post another video how this communication is done. It's a very interesting and intriguing thing I had to work previously and I somehow perfected for this uh, during this part of my work. I will post that video shortly. So once these pulses are received, there are four pulses for motor one, two, three, four. So four set of pulses will be required. These pulses are received by or uh, these uh, values are received by the uh, this controller, second Arduino, uh, and then the original PWM code which was running on this board is actually running here. So once those pulses are received, this will generate the uh, PWM pulses for the four ESCs. Okay, and then it will transfer. To, uh, it will transmit it to the uh, ESC. So now uh, how the hardware part we will discuss here. The software part I will put up a different video. Okay, so like we were discussing, I made this small uh, module. Uh, module as it is a connector module which will uh, connect to the four, uh, four ESC signal cables. So these are the ESC input cables. So this four of these will connect to the four ports. Now this is actually receiving the PWM pulses from the Arduino Nano. So I will not use this entire board here to reduce the weight. I just keep the uh, Arduino and the bare Arduino with the pins, and then I will find a spot to mount this. This is uh, for now just an improvisation. I will later on build a board in which none of these additional pins are there. Everything is soldered onto the primary controller, so that way it will become more uh, optimal. The space utilization will be more and uh, less, and the weight will also be less. For now, so this PWM pulses from the under nano, and we, here I'm using pin four, pin four, uh, that is D four, D five, D six, D seven to output the PWM pulses. So I will connect this like this, connect this way. And then this will be sitting somewhere inside and this will be this port or module, I don't know what to call it, will be placed at the front of the drone that is here. Okay. So I will place it there. So in addition to that, these four PWM lines uh, or the signal lines, these two uh, are the the power lines that is uh, I'm since I'm powering up my drone from the ESC BEC line okay the ESC gives a 5 volt output so I'm utilizing this line I'm taking it from the ESC and then sending it to my radio receiver this is the radio receiver I'll put it here so this is like a distribution board for all the power lines put it there now one important thing uh, uh, what happens is yeah, since you're working with this drone and vibration is a big major issue here so whenever whenever uh, your flight controller uh, the flight controller like i mm, told you earlier the flight controller is has been uh, uh, like is sitting on this foam to isolate the vibrations okay so the more mechanically you can isolate the vibration the less um, less coding you have to perform since we are not using uh, the advanced filters like Kalman filter in this case okay so even to use a Kalman filter on this chip no 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 I need that computational time so with the current code I cannot I tried that it does not fit here even the memory goes out okay so even Kalman filter cannot get it. so once we are free with the two milliseconds I can probably try and utilize this anyway coming back so any wire that is connecting to this port no like any Say this, uh, this comes. Uh, this is connected to the frame of the drone, or it connects. Uh, it connect, it's connected to the motor. The motor will generate the vibrations. So wire transmits the vibration. If I connect it to the flight controller, the vibration is also transferred to the flight controller. 
so the softer the wire and why you have the better it is okay uh, so these wires are not soft they're quite hard stiff so they transmit some amount of vibration i i believe so for that i found these soft silicone wires okay these are 30 gauge 30 awg awg gauge silicone wires and the thing about these wires are no they are very soft they're actually very soft you one of the strand so it's very soft okay it's nice so i utilize this to make all the connections i will replace all the stiff wires with this soft silicone cables so the same silicone cables i've used here okay so this will not transfer any vibrations so that is what we will do now next thing is i uh, See, we need to make things uh, reliable in the drone right there are a lot of vibrations so this soldering is no wires they may break off so i'll seal them with this hot glue gun okay this is already heated now i will seal all the wires here with this hot glue gun so this is basically a good practice uh, you should do it actually after some certain amount of vibrations and some certain number of cycles no this connector will break at these joints here okay so that is all uh, so i will make this uh, make uh, position for this to, uh, second controller put it here and then place the uh, the esc output module here front and then connect all the wires there okay so that is all for today actually i just want to give a heads up to everyone who's watching or following my videos okay the gun is heated ah it's kind of sealed i won't put too much that may increase the weight so weight is again an important factor okay i cannot just add random uh, things and because the weight increase the weight of this module was four milli uh, four grams okay the moment i added this glue gun it must have increased by another two grams so weight is important factor here okay guys so this marks the end of our first video i will be coming back again with more updates to this work so have a nice day also please like and subscribe to my videos please put up comments if you have any questions